The next piece of functionality we're going to build is the ability to edit one of the houses that you uploaded. So you won't be able to edit anyone else's houses, just your own. But right now there's no place to, to edit it. There's no edit page. So that's what we're going to build first. And if you click into a page, the, the view page for a house, we're going to work on adding a little nav up above the, the H1 on the page that will only show up and give you the option to edit if it's a house that you uploaded. So that's what we're going to do first. And we're going to do that by closing everything out and going into a component called house nav. So that's an SRC components. And we're going to start by uncommenting everything except the delete house below. Okay, so in here we have an interface to define and what we're receiving is the house. So interface I props because that's what the interface is for and we receive a house. Now we don't care about all the properties of a house. Uh, the only ones we actually need are the ID and the user ID, which is a string. So we need that to be able to compare the user who's authenticated with the user ID of the house so that we can see if there's a match. So below the interface, we'll export the house nav component. So that would be export default function house nav. And it's going to receive this house and we tell it its data. And now we're into the uh, component itself. So what we're going to be returning is a fragment. And everybody, no matter what, is going to at least get a link that takes them to the home page. So authenticated or not, here you go. Here's the map. Okay, so why don't we just hook this up so that it starts to work and we can visually see it on the screen. So the page we're going to be adding it to is the houses show page. So that would be inside of houses, the dynamic ID index, go up to the top and uncomment that house nav that was the last one we haven't used yet on this page. And then we're going to come down into the component itself, just above this H1 here, and we're going to put the house nav. So house nav like this, and it wants to receive the house, so we can just pass in that. And the house should be querying the ID and the user ID. So we have all the data we need in place. Why don't we go back to the screen and we can see here that we have a link to the map now. So we're going to add uh, right now one additional link edit if the user matches. So let's go back to the house nav. So first of all, we have to basically find out um, who the user is and if there's a user. So we're going to do that by using our use auth um, hook. And this gives us the authenticated context. And one of the things on that is the user. We're also going to add in a link for whether the user can manage the house that was passed in. So we're going to say uh, can manage and when can you manage? So we're going to just check if there's a user first. So we'll say bang bang user and the user dot UID must equal the house dot user ID. So if this scenario is true, then the user can manage. So just below the map link here, we're going to say, so if can manage, and then at this point, we're actually going to put another fragment. And then we'll do our work inside of this fragment. So the first thing we're going to do is add a spacer between the map link and the edit link, just like that. And then we'll add another link here with an A inside of it that says edit. So where is this going to take the user to? It's going to take them to the href. We're going to use a back tick so we can embed a value. So the, the URL is going to be houses, then the ID of the house, so house.id. And that's why we needed the ID here. Edit, just like that. So hit save. It should uh, format everything, come back. And I do have the ability to edit this house because uh, I added it. I'm the only user actually, so <laughs> every house. Okay, edit takes us to the edit house page that um, needs to be built. So we can close these pages. Uh, we're not going to use them anymore. And we're going to hop over to the edit page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with 
Um, uncommenting everything except these uh, variables. We'll be able to uncomment those in a second, but not quite yet. So it's time to define a query to load the house. So when you're editing a house, it's sort of a combination of an add and a show. You have to load the house first so you can have all of its details. And then you pass those details to the form and that's sort of your initial value for when you're editing um, the, form, the form input values. So we'll say const edit house query is equal to a GraphQL query. So we're gonna call this the edit house query and it needs a variable to work. It needs an ID, which is a string, a big S on it and a bang on the end because it's a required input value. So the actual house query itself, this is the exact one we did before. So an ID maps up to the, the, the variable up here and then all the fields we want. So we want the ID, the user ID, the address, oops, we're going to get the image, the public ID, the bedrooms, the latitude, and the longitude. So pretty much every field we're going to ask for because we need to edit all of those. So down here in the edit house component, just going to add some spacing to bring it up a bit. First thing we need to do is we need to ask Next.js um, what the ID is. So what's this dynamic part in the URL, this ID? So we've done this before in show. We're actually going to be doing the exact same code, but we're just gonna type it out again because that's the way we learn repetition. So the, what we do is we say const is equal to use router. From the router, we can get all of the query parameters and from that, we can get the ID. We're gonna say if there's not an ID, just going to return null from for now until um, until the router sort of initializes itself and re-renders for the first time, and then for our return value, we're going to return house data doesn't exist yet, but we're going to pass to this the ID and just make sure that TypeScript knows that it's it's a string, not an array of strings. So it's time to go build this house data component. And we're just going to do it directly below this. Um, I, I separated these into smaller components just because I think it's easier to manage it this way. You're not trying to manage, do I have the ID from the router and have I executed the GraphQL query? It's way easier to just separate them out. Like I don't have the ID, I have the ID here and I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so we're going to create a function called house data and it is going to receive the ID and we'll just declare the types in line. So the ID is going to be a string just like this. So now we can come here and we can um, execute the query. But before we do that, we're also just going to grab the user from the use auth hook because we're going to use that later to do another check on this page as well to make sure that the user owns the house they're trying to edit. Now we're gonna load the house itself. So from the GraphQL query coming back, we are going to get the data and whether it's loading or, or not. And we're going to use the use query hook, passing in the edit house query variable that we did here. So this wants um, variables and, but before we do that, why don't we just code gen the types so that once we do add the variables, we can ensure ourselves that everything's working well. So go into your iterm, just gonna clear it out and we'll do yarn code gen. Now we haven't modified the schema at all, so you, you shouldn't have to um, worry about that. We're basically just doing a query um, using the same query that we've already built. But this generates us an edit house query so we know sort of what are the variables we need and what are the values coming back, perfect. So now you can uncomment the last import at the top of the file that we hadn't used yet. We can come down here and we can say, so use query, these are your types here, edit house query and edit house query variables. And we have to pass in the variables. So variables and the one we're passing in is the ID. 
just like that. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna have a whole bunch of if statements and a whole bunch of checks, like is the user logged in? Is the page loading? Um, do we have data? Does it match? So we're just gonna work through all of those. So the first thing I'm gonna check is, um, is the user logged in? So for that, we are just going to say, if there's not a user, we're going to return uh, the layout with a main that has a div that says, please log in. Now, oop, let me just close this. There we go. So why wouldn't we just take them to the auth page right away? We're actually gonna do that in a second with a server side, get server side props that will redirect them there. This is just like a fallback, um, just in case. I like to check on both the back end and the front end. Um, so that's the first one. Second one is if the page is loading. So I've just copied and pasted that and we'll say, if the GraphQL query is loading, what we can just say here is loading dot dot dot. Feel free to style that however you would like. So if we get to this point, we know there's a user, we know um, it's not loading, it's loaded. So we'll just check if data and not data dot house. So if there is data, but there's not a house, we're gonna return basically that we were unable to load the house. Unable to load house, just like that. Okay, just one more check. So if we get to this point, we have loaded the house, we do have a user, we're just gonna do one last check to make sure that the user.uid is equal to the data.house.userid just like this. Um, now it's saying it's possibly undefined. We're just gonna add this in to make TypeScript happy. And then what we're going to do here is return a layout with a main, just like before. And this will just be a div that says, um, you don't have permission, like that. So that was a heck of a lot of checks uh, they're all good though, so just to go through them again, let's make sure the user's logged in. Let's check to see if the GraphQL query is finished loading. So at this point it has, we're just gonna double check, did it actually return a house? In which case we'll say, um, if it didn't, we'll, um, unable to load a house. And um, down here, if we did load the house, let's make sure that the user IDs matches the house's user ID. So if we get here, what we can do is we can, this won't be the final thing, but we'll just say return. Yes. Good to go. So we come back here. Now it's saying user permission. Oh, cause I said if it's equal to, so make sure even after walking through it like three times, it's when it's not equal. So. We want them equal. You don't want to return an error when they are equal. Okay. So we get this black yes showing up. So that means we're, we've we finished that part. Now we're gonna convert this into basically passing, um, passing the data to the, the house form. So I think I've already imported it, the house form, great. So we've loaded this we're going to reuse the house form or we're going to modify it so that it can handle both the add and the edit. So we're going to say house form and to the house form, we're going to pass the house. So this would be uh, data dot house, just like this. Now it's going to be telling us it's an error. And that's true because we haven't gone to this form and updated it, updated its interface and the props it receives and all that stuff. We're actually not gonna fix that in this video. That's gonna be the next. The next video is all about modifying this house form to handle edits. But I wanted to do one last thing where we add in a server side check to make sure that the user's authenticated. And if they're not, we'll redirect them to the off page. So they shouldn't even see this if they're not authenticated. So for that, we're going to export um, a function called get server side props like this, its data type is get server side props, and it's an async function that receives the request and a response. 
So we've done this a couple times before, but the first thing we're going to do is grab the user ID by loading the token from the request, which has it coming in via cookies. So load ID token, pass in the request, but we have to tweak its type a little bit so that it um, the types match with what it's expecting. Every one of these get server side props wants us to return an object with some props in it. So you can see that that stopped the red line on this function here. But now we can check if there's not a user ID, what are we going to do? We're just going to send them to the auth page. So response.set header. We're going to set a location header that sends them to the auth page. We're going to set the status code to be 302. And then we're going to end this server side response, just like that. Cool. <laughs> so I made one mistake, actually. I was like, why is this ad house and why is there no nav? My bad. So up here where we returned the house form, we have to put that in a layout or otherwise it's going to look like garbage. So just change this to main, close that out like this. Perfect. So we're on the edit page. It's showing the form for add a house. That's because we haven't updated the house form yet to, to know when it's adding versus editing. That's all good. That's what we're going to do next. But why don't we just do a test? Why don't I log out and then paste this here? And if it works correctly, like it just did, it's going to take me to the auth page. So it won't even let me um, see that page at all. And we can ensure that the, the nav bar is working that we built by going here. And we should not see the edit button because we're not even logged in. So we shouldn't have the ability to manage this house. Perfect. That's it for this video. Let's move on and update the, um, the house form for edits. And then we're getting to the end of our app. All right. See you there.